Hi everyone, and welcome to this mini lecture on post 9-11 zombie narratives. So, in this mini lecture, we're going to take a look at zombie narratives, and we're going to approach them in a way that popular scholar, popular culture scholars approach studying and looking at a particular phenomenon or a particular aspect of popular culture. And so that often starts with, what's with all the zombies? Or what's with this craze? Or what's with that craze? And this particular question we are looking at, we're considering, you know, why has there been such a rage for zombies in the last 10 years? Uh, why is zombies so popular in that we see them in so many different forms? We see movies, we see comics, we see zombie runs, we see reenactment, or we see zombie games. Um, so the question is, why is that? And we're going to take a look at what might be one of the many things that influences the zombie craze. So uh, it's, it's useful to note that this zombie craze that we're looking at, that people are so you know, excited about, it started in the early 2000s, uh, really between 2002 and 2005. Five is really where it starts to explode, but it definitely, by that point, you already had s dozens of mo zombie movies, you had a whole bunch of new zombie uh, narratives come out, and I think that's important to realize, is that we think of Walking Dead as you know, uh, the the film, or uh, sorry, the TV show Walking Dead as, as, you know, that's when it all started. But it started well before that, and I, th and I think that's important to remember. So, we see a handful of films come out in the early 2000s that really play upon this. Resident Evil. Um, and I think with Resident Evil and in a lot of these, it's important to remember that the creators didn't necessarily identify their, the monsters as zombies but the audience did and that's an important piece just because you know when we get to 28 days later and we know that the creators say no 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 they weren't zombies uh, it doesn't matter because the audience saw them and understood them as zombies and reacted and, and got excited about them because that um, so this is a very important piece this is kind of the reader reception approach is that the fans the audience uh, essentially dictated what what this is but we also see the emergence of the Walking Dead comics in early in 2003, uh, the Zombie Survival Guide by Max Brooks in 2003, the Dawn of the Dead remake from 2004, Shaun of the Dead in 2004, Land of the Dead. Um, so it's interesting to note that in 2004 you have two films that come from or are related to George R. Romero, the guy that gave us. Uh, Night of the Living Dead, the original well-known zombie film, and then Dawn of the Dead. So d the Dawn of the Dead remake, uh, Romero wasn't necessarily as involved in, but he was definitely involved in Land of the Dead, which was the next movie in his zombie series. Uh, and then we also have the comics Remains, uh, which was ultimately l later made into a movie and had an interesting dialogue between you know the contrast of fast-moving zombies and slow-moving zombies. So, the question that this that this begs is, what triggered it? Why did we all of a sudden get so many zombie narratives? I mean, what I showed you there was, it was a mere small pittance compared to if you go on to, say, Wikipedia and put in zombie narrative and look at how many zombie films have been made in the last in the last 14 years, um, hundreds of films. Meanwhile, between uh, 1950 and 2002 you know, you have a few dozen. Um, you have a few dozen zombie films that are made. So it's a really big explosion, so the question is why? So one of the things that pop culture scholar does is they try to look at the differences, like why all of a sudden are zombie narratives big and important? And one way you get at that is looking at the differences between past examples and, and present examples. We see a distinct split in time. The last well-received well-acknowledged zombie film came in the 1980s and so you have a period of almost 16 to 17 years where no zombie film is it be, or there's barely any zombie film you can think of that's actually presented in mainstream audiences never mind makes the top 10 blockbuster you know ma makes the top 10 uh, highest grossing films and yet dawn of the dead the film that dawn of the dawn of the dead remake kicks out of number one in 2004 the Passion of the Christ, and I always find that amusing that one zombie film uh, or one film about a guy that comes back from the dead is, is replaced by another film in which hordes of people come back from the dead. 
So the first thing you do is you look at, well, what, you know, you look at these differences and you try to draw conclusions or comparisons between those differences. And then the second piece is you look at, well, what's going on in the world? What things have changed? What things are constant? What, you know, what kind of big world events or, you know, cultural events, changes that have influenced or really um, might have some influence on, on how these narratives are perceived? And you try to make you try to see where the connections fall. So in this case, if we look, as I said, the last significant zombie films were the 1980s. Um, when we look at that new zombie narrative, I think there's some important things to to notice about the new zombie. The first is that it's the high octane zombie, right? This is the this is the speed racer of zombies. It doesn't sit there and like slowly move step by step so that you know an old person in a walker could get away. It sprints. It can do the 100-yard dash faster than most of us. It is a very, very fast-moving zombie. And so it's a zombie that's hard to escape from. It also, we see zombies occur, or these narratives occur in suburbia, in cities. Um, we're no longer in the countryside, such as in uh, Night of the Living Dead. Uh, it really does. There's a lot of focus on suburbia, uh, whereas some of the previous zombie films, particularly uh, Dawn of the Dead, uh, certainly Dawn of the Dead and, uh, well, not so much the, the Day of the Dead, but Dawn, uh, Dawn of the Dead did take place in a city, right? So they escape, you know, they try to escape to a, a mall. Uh, but we see a lot more of these taking place in the countryside, uh, I'm sorry, in the suburbia, which is a very interesting difference. And then newer explanations of zombification. We have rage, genetic man manipulation, toxic exposure, right? So the speci specifically rage and genetic man manipulation are interesting uh, because we haven't necessarily seen that before. All right, so what were early or what were major shifts in the early 2000s? Well, the first, of course, is the rise of pandemic illnesses and outbreaks. You have SARS, you have uh, bird flu, and, and we see that throughout the, the rest of the 2000s and the concerns around, you know, what this could do to a, po you know, to a population, um, how quickly it could spread. And so, of course, with zombies, that's definitely one area that you could say is being channeled in these zombie narratives. But the other that I think is important and isn't always play, isn't always given as much attention is 9/11. 9/11 in the dialogue, in the ways in which m the media represented uh, the terrorists and potentially even uh, Muslims as a whole. And I think that's one of the more interesting aspects we see within uh, within the zombie narrative. So we'll break this down. Right, so our lessons, the things that the media told us time and again, the things we're supposed to take from 9-11 is that we can't escape terrorism, right? 9-11 meant terrorism wasn't just something that happened in countries that we can't identify on a map. Terrorism was something that happened in our backyard, that we can't get away from it, um, that they can get, to, can get to us in our homes, suburbs, boats, malls, wherever. They can get us. Um, it's no longer, we're no longer safe in our homes. They look like us, but should be killed without argument. And again, if we think about this, so much of the rhetoric around terrorists and what to do with them is kill them. There should be no, you know, we do not negotiate with terrorists. Well, there's a there's a logical conclusion of that at which it says we kill them. We, you know, we, we don't argue about this. We don't debate about this. We kill them. They are ungodly people. I think this is particularly important because, again, as we look at the rhetoric and the dialogue around 9-11, so much of it talked about the United States as a Christian nation and the idea that these particular terrorists were non-Christians uh, you know, brings up a very, th that, that was a point made, that they're not Christian people, therefore they're ungodly people, or that's the assumption that is made and presented. They want to kill us or convert us, right? This was the message again that was hammered home by the media. They want to kill us or convert us. If they, if we cannot be, you know, in this context, what the media presented was a de an idea that if they do not, if we do not convert them, they want to eliminate us, uh, and they won't stop until either we're all dead or they are, right? There is this this militant extremism, this this idea that. They will keep doing this, right? They will keep striking. They are ceaseless in their in their attacks. Um, 
And I think it's important to realize that, you know, with 9-11, Muslim terrorists became the modern other for American society. And what we, again, what we mean by that is they, are, they became the icon upon which we fix all things that we don't like or that we think are not American. And that, you know, when we look at and get into talking about zombie narratives, that makes what we do to zombies, and by proxy, you know, our, our perception of Muslim terrorists, a lot easier to do. So again, let's take a look at the, this breakdown between uh, lessons from 9-11 and the new zombie narrative. We can't escape them, right? And we have this fast-moving zombie. It's inescapable. They can get onto our homes, our suburbs, our boats, our malls. Zombies can budge through doors, barriers, right? These new zombie films, I mean, they crawl through all sorts of things. They knock down these large barriers. You know, whether they do simple blocking does not work. You cannot protect a space from zombies. Um, they look like us, and but you should kill them without argument. And, you know, the line gets set in so many zombie, you know, so many zombie narratives. You can't reason with a zombie. You just have to kill it. Right? You just you cannot talk to it. You cannot engage with it. You just kill it. Uh, so there's there's a very strong parallel there. They're ungodly people, and of course, in almost every zombie movie, there is this reference to them being the undead sent from hell. Uh, particularly in like the 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 Living Dead series, there's typically at some point a line that talks about you know hell got so full of people that's you know the undead would walk the earth. And so there again, you know, seeing the seeing the terrorists as ungodly people, and that these characters are ungodly, and that you know they went to hell and they were rejected from hell as well. They want to kill us and convert us, and of course the the zombie wants to either consume you, right, eat you, internalize you, or convert you. So again, it's another form of of killing or converting. And then they won't stop until either we're all dead or they are. And the zombie must keep doing this until either all humans are dead or until the zombie's dead. So there's this mindless obedience to do it. So what we see here are some very strong parallels between 9-11 and the new zombie narratives. Now, I don't want people to hear this and think, oh my gosh, you know, that, that you know, I, but... It's, sometimes people will hear this and think, oh, well, these, so these creators were really talking about, uh, were really talking about, Islamic terrorism. You know, I don't think that's what they were doing. And people get people sometimes get confused that by saying this is one way you can see these zombie narratives that that implies intention on the creator's behalf. And that's not always the case. There's a lot of times in which the the audience, the readers, the viewers are experiencing something that doesn't always isn't in control of the creator and I think that's an important piece to understand here so here's how it works or here's what we're looking at when I when we talk about these types of interpretations that the zombie films the zombie narratives they tap into our pre-existing anxiety in this case they tap into our anxiety about Islamic terrorism as generated through the media this anxiety is regularly generated by the news media, and so you know it's constantly there. And particularly, at, you know, in the years after 9/11, the 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 war drums about terrorism in 9/11 and the threat that the Islamic terrorists represented were absolutely just being pounded away day after day. So experiencing that anxiety over the same concerns in the news media as in the narrative. So what happens is this zombie narrative, it taps upon those anxieties that have been generated by the news media. And so in some ways, people are in that, or watching that film, or engaged in that narrative, and they're feeling very similar anxieties, right? They're experiencing, you know, that concern and that angst over this inescapable, all-powerful, all-powerful force. And at the end of the narrative, they achieve some catharsis. They achieve some, you know, some sense of emotional relief because the movie ends. You know, it can end in dire ways. It can end in wonderful ways. You know, the 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 the, uh, the survivors walk off to go create, you know, recreate humankind, or there are no survivors left. It doesn't matter because the narrative ends. The credits roll. There is something that is released at the end of that 
experience. Um, and that's something they don't get in the news media. The news media will constantly, you know, say, this is the threat, this is the threat. You do not hear the news media say, oh, it's not a threat anymore. There's just a constant persi persistence of anxiety induced in the mainstream culture. So in this regard, you end up seeing this opportunity to experience some relief. And that's why it becomes popular, or that's one piece of why it becomes popular. That's one reason why people have flocked to zombie films, because it offered some relief from the anxiety that they had been exposed to, in part from uh, the post-9-11 dialogue, and certainly, as I had mentioned before, with the, uh, with the various pandemic uh, illnesses that have been potentially threatening uh, our culture for the last 15 years. All right, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching, and see you in the next video.